Hello, my friends. So happy holidays, 2020. It has been a bit of a different year. I think that's the polite way to say it. Um, so I've decided to do things a little bit differently this year for my holiday gift to you. Uh, rather than doing the pattern I've done in the past, I've actually put together a video workshop for you. So I picked one of my favorite past holiday patterns. This is the candelabrum earrings. They're um, an interesting sort of geometric construction, a lot of fun to make. Um, there's also a lot of sort of nuances that I can really show you in a video, which you won't quite get in a pattern. So they're a nice one for a video. They utilize pretty common beads, so you probably have them in your stash. Uh, if you don't have exactly what's in there, it's a pretty flexible pattern, so you can probably find something that will work for you. If you go to, there's a link below there in the show notes. Um, if you go to that link, you'll be able to find this uh, free downloadable pattern, which is on my website. So you can print that out and have that while we work. But we're actually going to work through every single step. Um, if you'd like, you can actually sort of start and stop the video. Uh, it works nicely that way. We can actually bead these together. So um, without further ado, let's get going. Okay, before we get going, let's just go over the beads that are used in this. So you're going to use some 15 round Japanese seed beads, and you can really use as many colors as you like. Um, I have five laid out here, and that's what I've used in this pair of earrings here. But if you want to use more or less, that's completely fine. Um, there's also going to be some 11 round seed beads, and actually you only need two of these for this project. There's just two of those in here. Um, there's going to be some 15 check charlottes, so we'll need some of those. And then you're going to need some pearls. And these are Swarovski pearls, but you can use any kind of glass pearl, uh, natural pearl, whatever you like. But you're going to need two 8 millimeter size. And those are in here. You can see inside there. And then you're going to need two more sets of two. And these are used, there's, there's one down here, and then there's one that's up at the top here by the loop um, on the earring there. So you can pick um, two different colors like I have here. And those should be anywhere from the sort of four to six millimeter size range. Um, you can use rice shaped pearls too. If you look at the pictures and the instructions, you'll see those are, are rice shaped pearls um, or you can use round ones, whatever you like but you'll need those. You're also going to need some rondelles, um, two by four millimeter. These ones are Swarovski uh, 5040s, um, but you can certainly use check rondelles, whatever you like. Um, it doesn't matter. Those are actually inside the structure, so you don't really see them anyway. Um, you're going to need some drop beads. Those are added on kind of at the end here, um, and you're going to need a total of eight. These here are some Swarovski drops, but you can also use the check, like the four by six check drops, so those will work fine as well. So you can use those two. And then you're going to need some French ear wires. So those are all the bits and pieces. What I'm going to do is in the show notes, I will list for you the exact uh, color numbers of what I've used here today so that you have that for reference if you'd like to, um, if you'd like to match up to this pair of earrings. So we are uh, going to get going. Okay, we're going to start this earring by building this sort of internal structure here that you see with the up and down points. And that is built using uh, herringbone and peyote stitch. We're going to do a combination of those two stitches to create that. Um, we are going to uh, start with, it's a fair amount of thread. I, I usually start with about seven feet. You can probably get away with a little less than that, but I always feel like it's better to have too much than uh, too little. And you can use whatever you like. I'm using a six pound fire line. And so that's kind of my preferred thread. But if you prefer a nylon, that works too. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, thread up my beads. I have a size 13 needle on here. And again, I have six pound fire line, but use what you like. And I'm going to slide down these four beads. We started with our four beads. You want to leave about a 20 inch tail here. The reason being is you're actually going to be using that later on to put put the loop on and whatnot uh, on the uh, earring. So make sure you don't forget to leave that. And here's my four beads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a square knot. So right over left, left over right here. And here's the other bit of it. If you, if you notice when I tie my knots, 
Um, I tend to tie them up high instead of pulling them down to the beads. So I tend to tighten them up like that and then pull them down to keep the beads from getting caught up in the knot. Um, Fireline works really nicely for that. If you're working with nylon thread, it doesn't slide as well, but for Fireline, that's a great little trick. So now I'm gonna go through one bead here. So I'm coming out of a bead as opposed to coming off a knot. And we have that little square of the four beads right there to start. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick with this color here, I, with this dark purple to start. And I'm gonna pick up two beads and then go through the very next one of these four beads. So I'm picking up two and going through the next one. And what this is doing is this is actually gonna be setting you up for herringbone ladders. So these sets of two are gonna end up being herringbone ladders. So we're gonna pick up two, go through the very next bead there. Now we're gonna pick up two, and through the next bead. And then we're gonna pick up two more. So it ends up being four sets of two. And a lot of times you kind of have to fiddle with these beads to get them to sit properly. They're, they don't always wanna cooperate at first, but there we go. So our last set of two, one, two. We're gonna go through that original bead there in the circle of four, and then it's like a step up there. So you wanna step up through the first bead and that first set of two. We'll pull all of this nice and tight. There we go, there's the start there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, and again, you know, whether you change color or not, this is up to you, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna stay with the color that I've been using. We're gonna pick up two beads here and go down the second one. So I'm coming out the first one in that set of two, pick up two, go down the second bead in that set of two. Pull everything down, kind of pop those into place. That's a herringbone stitch. Now, before I go up into the next set of two, I'm gonna add a bead in between. So pick up a bead and then go up into the first bead in that next set of two. Again, pick up two, one, two. Go down the second bead in that set of two. So essentially herringbone stitches and adding one bead in between the herringbone stitches. Go, because we're building this out. It's kind of a square shape at the moment that's starting to occur here. So pick up two, down the second bead in that set of two there. Oops. And again, you're just gonna have to keep popping them into place to get them to sit where they need to. Went one too far there. Get that back. There's our one in between. Okay, and then we're up to our last set of two. You can really start seeing that square forming now. Last set of two. Go down the second one in that set. There we go, and one more, and then we have the step up here. Let me just show you the step up, because this is important. When we get to the end of the round, there's gonna be a step up through two beads in that first column in that herringbone ladder there. So you can see I'm going up through two. Important that you remember to do that, because if you don't get that step up in there, what happens is, um. It's like you lose a spot along the edge and it's gonna make for problems later on when we try to do some uh, zipping later on. So there's that round. Um, next round, what we're gonna do, it's, uh, it's gonna be again the herringbone stitch on those sets of two. So pick up two, go down the second one in that set of two. But now this time, if you remember last time we added one bead in between, this time we're gonna pick up two beads so pick up two and go straight the way across and into the first bead in that next herringbone ladder. And what these two beads are gonna be is eventually those are gonna be another herringbone ladder. So ultimately we're gonna have eight herringbone ladders on here, but for the time being, we're just adding the two beads in between 
and then we're ready to do another set of two here. So uh, you're going to continue all the way around like this where you're adding the, the two beads between on the herringbone ladders and then two beads strung up in between the herringbone ladders. So again, there's our two strung up and up through there. So I'm going to go ahead. I will finish the round. I'm going to come back though because I do want to show you that step up again. It's, it's really important. Okay, I am back now for that last set of two in here. And I'm going to add those two. And then this is the step up again. So when you get to the end, you have that step up through the two beads in that first column in that first herringbone ladder. So you want to make sure you got that step up in there, just like that. I'm going to pull that through. And now you'll find if you put a bit of tension on this, you can see it sort of cups up like that. If I turn it on the side, you might see it a little bit better. That's fine. Um, that actually sort of is a shape it ends up taking in the end anyway. It sort of dips down in the center. So um, so if you put a little tension on that, that's that's good. You want to make sure you have that. You want those beads to sit pretty, um, pretty close together, those two. You don't want them to be too separated. Um, so let's do the next round. Next round, we're going to do our herringbone stitch. So this is the two beads and down the second bead there. So that's like what we've been doing. But now we're going to utilize those two beads that we added between and make that into a herringbone ladder. So to do that, I'm just going to come through the first in that set of two that we added. And we're going to add two. So it's going to be a herringbone stitch. I'm going to go through the second one there. And then I'm going to come across and up into that first bead in that next of the original four herringbone ladders. So we had the original four and now we're adding ones in between. And again, you often have to kind of put that into place there so it sits the way it's supposed to, but that should be a herringbone stitch in between there. So now we're on that second of the original four ladders. We're going to do our herringbone stitch. Make sure those guys sit where they're supposed to and now come up through that first and that set of two there in between. Pick up two. There we go. Go through the second in that set and then I'm going to come over and through the first bead in the set of two there. That's again, that's the third of the original herringbone ladders. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to finish the round and again, I'll come back to make sure that you, um, that you see the step up. Okay, so I'm just finishing up the round here. I've added these two between that set of two added previously, and then I am here. This is back to the first original herringbone ladder, and I have that step up through two beads. So again, just make sure that you don't miss out on that step up because that will throw you for sure. I pull everything tight. There we go. And again, you can see it still kind of dips down. If I turn it sideways, maybe you see it a little bit better in the center here. That's fine. Um, you kind of want that shape. So, and that just comes with the tension on it there. So the next round, and I'm going to change colors on this one. We get to change colors now. Although, like I said, you can, you can make those color decisions as you go along. I haven't given A's, B's, and C's to anything um, just because it's fun to make those choices yourself too. So we're going to start off here with two of the 15s herringbone stitch. It's just your basic herringbone stitch. Now we're going to just add a single bead. So get these into place. Add a single bead and go up through the first in that set of two there. That's the, the in-between herringbone ladder, the ones that we've just created here. And then, of course, that's a herringbone ladder. So we're going to pick up our two and go down the second in that set. And then we're going to pick up just one bead in between. So basically, you're doing herringbone stitches and just adding one bead in between those herringbone ladders. And you're going to go all the way around doing that. So I'll do another herringbone stitch and then one herringbone stitch all the way around. And when I get back to the beginning here, I'm going to come back again and I will show you the step up and we'll start the next round. Okay, so I finished up that round there other than the last bead, which I have on my needle. And again, we're going to have that step up or I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go up through two beads. So I have my one bead on and then I'm going to go up through the two beads right there. And that kind of finishes it up. Pull that through. There we go. So there's a round. 
another round now. And this time we're going to, again, we're going to stick with this same color that we've just done, which is this sort of, it's like an opal gold lined color. And we're going to do a herringbone stitch. So whenever you have a herringbone ladder, you're going to do your herringbone stitch. And now in between here, what we want to do is we want to peyote stitch. So we're going to actually peyote stitch. If I grab my pointer here, we're going to be peyote stitching two beads. We're going to add one here, go through that single bead that was added in between, add another one here, and then we'll be up in the herringbone ladder. So we're going to peyote stitch two beads in between. Oops. There we go. That's number one. And number two. And then we're back to the next herringbone ladder. So we're gonna do that all the way around. Again, we'll just do it one more time for good measure. Herringbone stitch. And what you're gonna find is um, it's gonna it's gonna start taking on kind of that uh, zigzaggy like up and down effect that you see when you look at the structure itself. And uh, basically, what uh, I try to do is I try to encourage the four original herringbone ladders to go up and the ones in between to go down. So let me show you that too, so you can know what I'm saying here. So this here is an original herringbone ladder. So I want to kind of encourage that to go up like that. And then in between, I want it down and then up again. So it's going to start creating this zigzag along the edge. And that's exactly what we want to encourage to get the shape correct. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll finish this round and I'll be back and we'll talk about what's next. Okay, uh, down to the last bead here. Have it on my needle and I'm going to go and I again always... Remember that step up through two beads there, super important. Kind of repeat it ad nauseum, but it is very important in getting the structure to work correctly. So pop that into place and you can see, you know, in order for these beads to kind of fit in the peyote stitch sections here, it really does have to take on that zigzag shape. Um, so just keep encouraging that. Again, the original four herringbone ladders are gonna kind of come up there are these guys here and the in-between ones that were added, those are going to kind of come down and that's what you want to get there. So we're going to do another round and this time I'm going to switch over to these. These are those nice 24 karat plated ones. So we're going to do a herringbone stitch and we're going to, again, we're going to peyote stitch in between the herringbone ladders, but this time there's three spaces to stitch in. Sort of with each round, you end up getting another spot for your peyote stitch. So there's number one. And again, in order to kind of fit these guys in there, you really do have to kind of force that zigzag um, shape along the edge. Otherwise, you know, the beads don't fit in there. So put in the second one here. And you wanna make sure that they're clicked in there, that they're popped in place and that there's not any thread showing. You can almost hear them pop in there. So there we go, number two and number three. Put that in there too. And you can see there's that, there's that zig, and we're about to do the zag going up. So um, again, same thing all the way around, herringbone stitch on the herringbone ladders, peyote stitch one, two, three in between. So I'll finish this round and I will come back for the step up. Okay, we are finishing up that round. I have the last bead on there. And again, the much anticipated, never to be forgotten step up. It's gonna be through the two beads here. And sometimes you'll find that the further along you get, the harder it is to do the two beads at once. So I'm gonna do like you can see me doing here. Go through one and then through the second bead if that's necessary. And then again, kind of encourage everything to take that zigzag shape there. We want that zigzag effect going. You can see every round that's going to get more and more defined there. So I am going to do another round. Uh, this time again, we're going to change color and we're going to do, these are the 24 karat pleated, but they're the matte finish. So we'll be doing a, pew, or a, sorry, a herringbone stitch not a peyote stitch, herringbone stitch. 
on the herringbone ladder, and then we'll do our peyote stitches. And it's going to be this time, it's going to be four added one at a time in between the herringbone ladders. So we'll just peyote stitch our four. That'll bring us over to the next herringbone ladder. Do a herringbone stitch and then four more. So all the way around, you're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I will do that now and I will come back again uh, just in time for that step up. Okay, end of the round there and we have our last one in the round and then the again ever important and exciting step up. You can see I'm going through one bead at a time but I am going through the two beads. I'm gonna make sure we have that step up in there and we are gonna do another round so and you've guessed it it's going to be a herringbone stitch on the herringbone and then we're going to peyote stitch in between the herringbone ladders and this time we're up to five beads being added in between so five beads one at a time peyote stitched between the herringbone ladders and then another herringbone stitch so um, i'm going to go ahead i'm going to do this it takes a little while to when you get to this point where you have so many peyote stitch in between the herringbone um, and i will come back when we are ready to step up Okay, at the end of the round, again, our last bead there, and we're gonna step up through the two beads. There we go, through our two, and that finishes that off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually leave our thread attached here, because we're gonna come back to it. We're gonna actually zip these up to create the kind of points that you see on the finished earring. Um, but first, before we do that, we're gonna have to add the pearls that are underneath. So if you have a look at the earring here, you can see there's these pearls that are added. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear up my board and rearrange things a bit, and I will be right back to show you how we're gonna do that. And we're also gonna talk about adding this loop up here on top. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to be adding these pearls that you see down here. We want to add these in before we zip all of this up because you wouldn't be able to reach up in there. And we want to first make sure that our tail is on the underside. So um, this is going to be how it's going to zip like that and you want it to be coming out the bottom down there. So if it's coming out the top just go through and you want to be coming out the bottom and it should be coming out one of those four beads of the original four that when you started at the very beginning you strung up those four should be coming out one of those. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to string up some beads and then come back again and um, I just want to point it out now because it's hard to see it when I actually do it. But if you look at where I'm coming out so you can see my thread coming out there, coming out this bead there. I'm going to string out my beads and then I'm going to end off with a little uh, pico of Chuck Charlotte's, go back through my beads, and then I'm going to go through this bead that's directly opposite the one I'm coming out of there. Then come up through everything again, go back down, and back into the original one. So it's basically these two beads that are opposite each other are the ones that we're going to be attaching to. So I just want to point that out before we start, because like I said, it's a little hard to see once we get going here. But what we're going to do is we are going to first pick up a Japanese seed bead, an 11 round, and a rondelle. And this is just to kind of, we want the pearls to not be right up inside here, otherwise you wouldn't really see them. So this kind of just drops everything down a bit. So your 11 round, your rondelle, then you're going to pick up your 8 millimeter pearl, and then you want a little bit smaller pearl. So I'm going to go with a 6 millimeter pearl here, and then three Chuck Charlottes. So one, two, three slide everything down and again you want to just go back through your pearls and your rondelle and your 11 so we can get through all these guys and then again like I said you want to utilize the bead that's opposite the one that I'm coming out of. So it doesn't matter if you go in this direction or that direction but that bead that's opposite the one I'm coming out of and I'm going to pull everything tight. It does get caught on these, on these zigzags. They do catch on the threads there, so just be careful when you're working. Okay, we pulled that tight, and there we have our little pico at the end. Now what I'm going to do is go back through everything a second time just to reinforce here. So I'm going to go back through my 11 and my rondelle. i got to get my needle into that pearl and through the second pearl. And we want to go through all three beads in the pico again. So you can see this is just kind of 
reinforcing it. That's all this is doing. And also it's kind of helping a little bit to center it um, because we're going to be going again back through that original bead of the four that we we're coming out of when we get back to the top here. So we need to look for that original one of the four. And again, sometimes it's it's very hard to see uh, this on film, but um, if I look close, I can see this is the one right here and I need to go back through that. It's getting tight in here. So this, again, this is why you want a size 13 needle. And a lot of times it's just getting the angle right. So there I'm angling it back up and coming out on this side. Sometimes you have to do that. You just have to kind of mess around with it and get that angle right so that the needle will pull through. There we go. You can see it stands up there in the middle. So eventually we're gonna be zipping that all down. But before we do that, we're gonna also wanna add our loop, which is where we're gonna be attaching the uh, wire to. So if you have a look there, this is on the inside of this one that's finished. You can see there's a, um, grab my pointer here. There is a little pearl in there. That's a six millimeter pearl and a loop of 15 rounds. So we're going to use that same thread and again, we're going to be utilizing two opposite of those four beads. So it's the same concept as what we did on the other side. It's just, you know, a little bit different as far as the beads we're using. So we are going to use on this one, I'm going to grab one of these guys. Here's my six millimeter pearl in the other color. And then we're going to make our loop with the 15s. And I'm going to grab some 15s in from over here. Here they are, these are my 15s. And I'm gonna string them up. We want nine of these little guys here. So nine 15s. These were those 15s that I used at the very beginning when I was making the structure. So nine of those guys. Slide everything down. You're gonna go back through your pearl. And again, I wanna go through that bead that's opposite the one that I'm coming out of. So if I pull this back, I'm coming out this bead here. I wanna go for the one directly opposite. And again, this is where the angles get very tricky. You know, you kinda of have to, I'm gonna to have to come through on that side and then I'm gonna to have to come back up again. So um, it is a bit, it's a bit tricky, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna reinforce it as well a second time, just like we did underneath. Um, and then I'm gonna come back up. I'm gonna show you, um, it's a little sort of thing that we do with Charlotte's. It's optional, it's a bit tricky, but I will show you because that's how I wrote the original pattern. So I'll be right back. Okay, so there's my little loop ready for my ear wire on there. That's all done. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you this. It's a, it's a little bit hard to see even in here, but there is a ring of Charlotte's, almost like a collar down here around the pearl there. And that's what we're going to make. Um, it is a little bit fiddly and uh, certainly optional, but because it's how the pattern is written, I did want to show you that. So at least you've seen it. And if it makes you crazy and you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Um, you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. Uh, but what you want to do is again, you want to be, you want to start off with your thread should be coming out one of those four original 15s that are at the, uh, the center when you began the structure and you're going to string up five check Charlottes. So I want five check Charlottes here and I'm going to slide them down. And now what I want to do is I need to look for, and it's really hard to look for it because it's so tight in there, but I want to look for the 15 that is opposite the one that I'm coming out of. So you're probably not even going to be able to see this on film, but that is where I'm going for. And again, this is where, you know, you often have to go at a funny angle in order to even just get through the bead. So I've had to go down to the back side, and now I'm going to come back up again to the top side just because I really wasn't going to be able to get through it without that. So you can see, maybe you can see, there's some 15s there. Now I'm going to add five more 15s, 15 Chuck Charlottes I should say, They're smaller than a regular 15. So five more and now I'm going to come here and I want to go back through the original 15 
that I was coming out of when we started this whole thing. Again, you can see often coming to the backside makes it much more kind of viable to get the angle right in order to get through. And then I'm going to come back up. Here we go. Okay. So I need to make sure that they're lying where they're supposed to. But we have them there and there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass through these five original ones that I strung up, the five texture that I just strung up at the beginning, so not the most recent set, but the first five, pass through those again, and then I'm going to add two beads and go through the second set of five that I added, and that kind of fills in the little gap. There's a little gap because you, you went down and through the the, uh, the purple 15 there and then came back up again to do your next five. So this is just kind of creating a, a complete collar all the way around. Um, like I said, there's not much you can see when I'm doing this because it's all underneath the pearl as I work, but I'm going to work all the way through these five over here. And then what I'm going to do is add two more and go back again into the original, you know, the original five charlottes that we had strung up. So that kind of will do a complete collar all the way around that pearl. And then what you want to do is at this point, you can just get rid of this thread that you're working with here, the shorter thread. So I'm going to go ahead. I will do that. Um, I'll weave that off. I usually will kind of come down. You can half hitch in the charlottes if you can manage, but it's a little tricky. So I'll usually just kind of weave my way out to the outer edge here and kind of do a couple half hitches and bury the thread um, out in this structure um, out here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will be back and we're going to talk about doing some zipping. Okay, so I have finished off here. I am uh, woven off with the, the thread that I used to do the loop here. And I just have this one thread in here. That's the um, the working thread that we left, you know, we left it off when we were finishing these edges here. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna be doing the zipping. And you can see here, I've used sort of the dark beads going down. And then at the tips here, I have this other lighter purple color that I'm using. So you can use, you know, whatever colors you want really. Um, I like the contrast because it does show off the the like uh, zip round nicely. Um, but there's my thread. It's coming out. It should be, if you've left it where you uh, had left off earlier, should be coming out the top of sort of the, the top of one of these points here. It's sort of, I think of it as the tip. It's the one closer to the top of the earring. And what we're going to do is here, we're just going to pick up one of these 15s and go down the second bead in the herringbone ladder. So rather than doing a proper herringbone stitch with two beads, we're just going to add one bead and put that in place. Now we are going to peyote stitch down this edge here with, again, I'm using the darker color. We're going to peyote stitch right down along here. Okay, and one more of these darker purple colors. And then we're down to, this is sort of the next herringbone ladder. So it's the lower point here on the structure. And this time we're gonna pick up three of the 15s, but I'm going with this lighter purple color. And then I'm gonna go up through the second bead here. So it makes a nice little point there. Let's see, there we go. I gotta make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be, but there we go, just like that. So now I'm gonna peyote stitch back up. Again, switching back to that darker color. I'm gonna work my way up to the top of the next, you know, to the next tip. Okay, and there's the Last one before the tip here, and now we're coming out. You can see in there's that herringbone ladder here, and we're gonna do like we did on back over here. We're just gonna add one bead, go down the second bead in the herringbone ladder. And now we are at the exciting part where we get to start zipping. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna come over and rather than adding the beads, peyote stitching down here like we've been doing, we're gonna reach over and we're gonna share with these beads that we added on our way up. So I'm just gonna share like this, reach over and then come back. And if you need to do it in two separate passes, if you need to go through with a bead and then 
pull it through and go through the next one, but you're basically just zipping the peyote stitch between the two sides there. And you, know, you kind of need to encourage it to stay nice and tight. You want everything to stay tight as you work. So I'm gonna keep going back and forth. Now, as we approach the bottom, we don't want to zip it all the way down because we want to leave some space because there's that pearl in there. We don't want to crunch that in. So I'm going to zip it down to this point here. I'm kind of at the point now where there's two more beads to go before you get down to the herringbone uh, ladder right here. So there would be one, two more to peyote stitch in there. So when you get to that point, rather than reaching over and zipping, you're just gonna be adding. So for these last two, we'll just be adding in our beads just like that, adding again. And then we're down to the bottom here and we can add those three of that lighter color. You can see it's nice zipping in nicely now. And go up through the second bead in the herringbone ladder and that gives you again, a point at the bottom there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep kind of working around doing this where I'll, you know, I'll be peyote stitching up and then again, when I come back down, I wanna zip until I get to those last two and I'll be adding peyote stitching in the last two spots and then again, do the, the uh, three at the bottom um, to make that little point. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna do this all the way around and when I get to the end and everything is all zipped up, I'm gonna come back because we just got a little bit more to do after this. Okay, I have finished up here and it's totally zipped. It looks really, really kind of cool there, all zipped up. Um, now, if you want, you can take a, a little half hitch here. Sometimes it's really tight and it's tricky and hard to get in there. So if you can't, if you can't get in there to take a half hitch, it's sort of not necessary, but sometimes I find it's kind of nice to, to do that because it's just gonna hold everything nice and tight in there. So just doing like one little half hitch there. Uh, make sure it falls between the beads, doesn't show. And then I'm gonna come out of this tip bead here on one of these points. And now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna be stringing up, you can see there's these beads that go from tip to tip and uh, they have a, a drop on there as well. So um, to do that, you're gonna pick up seven of these Czech Charlottes. And I'm gonna say something that's kind of absurd right now, but you wanna look for the ones that have the larger holes if you can, which I know, like I said, sounds silly with beads this small. But if you can find the ones with the larger holes, we are gonna be passing through these a second time. Um, the other trick is to use a size 12 needle. And if you can get the size, the Charlotte's over the size 12 needle, then you'll have no problem going through a second time if you switch out to a 13. So that's a little Charlotte tip for you. Um, so I have my seven Czech Charlotte's. I'm gonna pick up one of these Japanese 15 rounds, pick up my drop, pick up another one of those 15 rounds for a little color accent. And then I'm gonna pick up seven more of these guys. So there's four, five, six, and seven. And I'm gonna go through the tip, the next tip, you know, the bead on the next tip. There we go, just like that. Right, so it'll sit like that. So I'm gonna do this again. We wanna do it between each of them. So that's gonna be three more times. I'm gonna do that I will come back and I will show you uh, what it looks like. Okay, so I have finished all four of those. Um, what I like to do then is just kind of go through things a second time. Um, and like I said, you know, if you used a size 12 needle to call your Charlottes, you should be good. Um, if you looked for the ones with the larger holes, as silly as that sounds, you should be okay too. Um, but what I'll do is I'll half hitch as I go along um, because that's a great way to kind of knot off. And then if you hit a point where you can't keep going, you know, you can just cut it and you can, you know, you'll know that you've knotted off along the way so that everything's secure. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I usually try to make it all the way around so that I've reinforced all of the sides and half hitched as I've gone. Um, and again, you only have to hitch half hitch maybe once or twice, um, you know, all the way around. Um, you don't have to do it between every bead. But um, I'm going to go ahead, I will do that, and I will be back. And the last thing is to put that ear wire on. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is put our ear wires on. So I like the French ear wires. You can use whatever earring finding you like, but that's what I like to use. And you may very well need a pair of pliers. Here are my very much 
loved, very old pair of pliers that I can't live without. Um, and you will grab your ear wire here. And you, like I said, you probably do need the pliers to kind of pry it open a bit because you need to open it up a bit there so that you can actually slip it, slip the loop of beads over it. Just like that. There we go. And squeeze it shut with your pliers. And that's that. You're all done with your earring. And so rinse and repeat. Do it again and you'll have your, your pair of two. Just like that. Thanks so much for joining me for the Candelabrum earrings. Be well, stay safe, happy holidays, and beat on.